but Talk afterwards, I want to because it's coming. Oh, Solly Mio. Hello. How you doing? All right? Yo! All right! Let's go, Chicago! Soldiers Field! Okay. Calm down now, calm down, please. Um, we did it in Japan. We did like a version of it in Japan and um, we dropped it. Didn't like it that much. It was okay, you know, but we just weren't that wild on it. So we put birthday in instead and we liked that better. Hi. Huh. Am I what? Um, well, I don't know, you know, um, we started off the tour uh, thinking it'd be a good idea to support people like uh, Friends of the Earth. And as you know, we've, we've supported them basically through the whole tour. And it's been really good, you know, because uh, all we were doing was bringing publicity to the issues. You know, I'm not an expert. And apparently Friends of the Earth have got like a lot of new members. And the kind of things I notice are when I see a, a kid who says, uh, I just did a class lecture to all my school friends about Friends of the Earth, about ecology, and we used your program to get all the facts, you know. So it's having some effect. It's great. And then later on, there's the uh, people for the ethical treatment of animals, Peter. I just believe in all that stuff, you know, so I'm happy to give them publicity. Yeah, um, it kind of, you know, I, I've th I'm thinking along those lines, but uh, it's not always easy to just come up with something because you want to write it. You know, sometimes songs write themselves. So I'll have to see, you know, if it works out. I'd like to. I haven't heard a lot of it, to tell you the truth, while I've been on the tour. I've been kind of playing tapes and stuff. I haven't really heard a lot, but... Um, I don't know, you tell me, is any good? I just wondering what, what your place is in, uh, with all the dance music. Oh, um, you know, I don't mind. I, I always like uh, a good selection of stuff. So um, rap isn't my field, you know, but I like it. I like to watch it uh, on TV and stuff and listen to it. Um, I like a lot of modern music. Yeah, I think it's good. I like dance music. Um, it's not particularly what I do, you know. And I think that kind of, in, in radio over here, puts me in like sort of adult contemporary. Uh, yeah, quite possibly. Um, I think, you know, because this, this has been a big sort of tour on the heels of the Stones and stuff, people tend to think, oh, this is bound to be his last tour, you know. And my great venerable age would suggest this kind of thing. But I've actually had a great time on this tour and the bands got better and better so we're basically we're putting a live album out from this tour and we got a film and then we'll make a new studio album and I would like to think that uh, after that we'll come back on tour um, I don't know really the promoter you know somebody said will you come back to Chicago we were I, we, we had a few options of where to finish the tour and uh, this was the most exciting. I always like Chicago. It's one of my cities, you know. I like, I, you know? Hey, man, I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, hang on. I think so. I think so, yeah. Yeah, hang on. Let's see the question, yeah?
Yeah, um, when I wrote Fool on the Hill, uh, the idea for me was always just someone who's got the right answer, but people tend to ridicule him. You know, whether he's a little guy sitting in a, in a, in a cave or on the top of a hill, or whether he's an activist. Um, and so I was, I was looking for a speech from somebody like that. And I think probably the greatest recorded speech in that vein is the Martin Luther King speech. So moving and so dramatic. And we found that it fitted exactly in, in the piece of music uh, that we had, a little solo in Full on the Hill. So it's great. It's, it's quite a stirring thing to uh, put in. Well, that's very nice. Thank you for thanking me. That's great, especially from the youngsters here. Um, shut up, I'm talking to her. <laughs> See, these older people, they just don't understand. Right, do you mind? Anyway, um, what's, what was the end bit of the question? What was the actual question? What can you do to help? Um, I think, you know, if you think about joining things like Friends of the Earth or Greenpeace or PETA, any of these organizations, they're very good at telling you what you can do. You know, you'll hear people talking about recycling and all that sort of stuff. Well, that's all brilliant. It's all very good. And uh, I think, you know, just believe. That's the main thing. Believe the world needs saving and, and you'll save it. Well, I don't know. Um, we were lucky. We started, we got into rock and roll, and the, the great thing that happened with us was national service, which was uh, going into the army in England, stopped. So we were able to have the Beatles and have our success. I think we wouldn't have had that uh, had it not been for that. Um, if I hadn't have gone into rock and roll, I, I think the nearest thing I could ever think to do was like to be a teacher, because that was kind of where I was heading. I don't think I would have been a very good one. <laughs> so, you know, thank God for rock and roll. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure exactly when, but I, it's, it's this autumn. It's towards the end of the year. Her, uh, Linda McCartney's home cooking cookbook is coming out. Do what? Do you think I've become a folk singer? Um, well, I don't. I don't, but you might. You know, I don't think I'm uh, getting into folk, really. Uh, but you know, I'm not really, I'm not really bothered what it's labelled. You know, some of the stuff I do, people can dance to, but you wouldn't call it dance music. You know, some of it may be a bit folksy. I mean, we, the most folksy thing we ever did was a Scottish thing called Mullo Kintyre, which is, um, hey, you're not supposed to know about that. It was only a hit in England. Well, uh, anyway, but that that was uh, good fun. You know, but I, I don't particularly think I'm going in any one direction. You know, I just go in whatever direction seems good at the time that interests me. You know. That's a yeah. Uh, it's a good question. I am actually yeah. Uh, it was a, it was a funny question that because at the end of the Beatles, uh, I used to really dread that question because you know they'd say to me, "Are you happy?" and I'd sort of say, "Uh." Yes, <laughs> and break down, you know, because like, it wasn't much fun, you know, it was very difficult to know what you were going to do in life, but, um, you know, because it's a hard act to follow, the Beatles. But I've done pretty well since that, you know, and, and with this kind of a tour and stuff, uh, yeah, I'm really happy, I've got a great family, a great band, and we seem to be selling some tickets along the line. What do I like to do? Sit around and talk to people of the press. Uh, this is one of my favorite things. I don't know really. I don't really think about, you know, uh, roles and stuff. Um, I just would like to continue making music. I want to get better. That's always my goal. Um, so hopefully, you know, if, I, if the next album's better than the last one, uh, that's really all that interests me, you know. I don't really think of myself as any kind of role model or anything, you know. It's, uh, it's just not the way I think. Well, 
Well, I never really mean to be kind of political. You know, my main thing is just to be a musician. But um, in 1989, when we started this tour, this big hole appeared over the Antarctic, you know, 50-mile hole. And I think, like the uh, young lady who asked the question before, it, it worries people. You know, I, I don't, I, normally at these conferences, I'll ask anyone who's not worried about the future of the Earth and the ecology to put their hands up, please, you know. And <laughs> go ahead then, smart ass. What are you coming? What are you going to say? Now, he's just joking. But, you know, normally, um, you know, obviously most people you'll meet uh, are, are worried about it. And really all I'm doing is giving publicity to that cause. And I think it's a very good cause. And I also feel very optimistic about it that with the help of these young people, we're going to turn it round. Elvis Presley? Yeah. Um, not Elvis Costello. The other one. Yeah, um, yeah we did. We, we met him one evening in Los Angeles, uh, where he, I think he had like a rented house. He was making films forever at that period. And um, he was really great. I think it was before he got uh, heavy in, in drugs or in physique. And um, he was great. He was a really great guy. We always, we just admired him so much. We were just in awe of him all evening, you know. But um, he was great. We, we played a bit of pool with him. He played records for us. And uh, he played Moher Sam all evening. Remember that record? And uh, it was the first guy I ever saw with a remote television switcher that could switch the channels. <laughs> My God! Yeah, um, he, he was trying to learn bass. So I was showing him a couple of licks on bass, which was great for me. You know, I walked in there and someone said, Elvis is trying to learn bass. I said, well, I'm your boy. <laughs> so it was great. I'm, I was always a great admirer of him. You know, he was, he was a big hero of mine. What, censoring yes. lyrics and stuff? I don't know, you know, it's a very difficult subject. I, I think whenever you censor something, um, that's what people want to buy. I think when you tell someone don't buy that, particularly kids, that's just where they go straight for. We had, uh, t we had some films, late night films in England on a Friday and a Saturday night that um, they thought were a little bit too racy for young people to watch. And they put a little red star in the corner of the screen. <laughs> So that was the, those are the films you watched out for. You know, it's got a red star! Great! So I think that's the danger, you know, without being too frivolous about it. I think that um, if you start banning things, uh, people are going to want it more. I don't know. I might get stickered. I don't know. I don't go out to get stickered, but I also I don't go out to uh, please people necessarily. You know, if it, if it warrants it, I suppose I might get stickered one of these days. I don't think so. No, I think basically we're doing the same show that we've done, but obviously for us it'll be a more emotional show. Um, as I say, Chicago's I, a crowd I always love. We loved them when we came into the arena end of it. They were a crazy crowd. So, and just coming in now, you know, I, I never arrive this late normally, but our plane was delayed. We had about an hour's delay. In fact, it sounds like he's still up there. <laughs> but. Um, so there was a great excitement out there, you know, so it, it'll be, that'll be the difference for us, I think, rather than uh, set changes. Uh, well, um, we won't be doing Party Party, but uh, there's been a few people in the audience who've requested that. But uh, there's not that many people know about it normally, and maybe it's just Chicago knows about that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, The Longer Mind Your Own film is uh, a film that we, the Beatles, have been trying to make for a long time. Um, because everybody else makes films about us, and people write books, uh, particularly in later years, you know, like the one about John and stuff. And there's been a couple about me. And they're basically not not very correct you know they kind of get a bunch of facts and then screw them all up and and make it a sensational book that will probably sells quite well so we at longer winding road it would be an attempt to try and put the story straight 
kind of a, a you know the story of the Beatles, and maybe we could narrate over it and kind of put things straight. The BBC tapes uh, will be getting released at some point. That's a radio show we used to do in England, which is called Pop Go the Beatles. That was going back a bit. What happened was we were in uh, Liverpool, and uh, this this John would have been 50 this year, uh, and so there's like certain tributes have been going on about him, you know. And uh, we played Liverpool about four weeks ago, and so we wanted to do something by way of a kind of you know a, a nod to John kind of thing because you know he was my best mate, and um, so we did a little medley that that we enjoyed doing so much that we've kept it in ever since. So that's how that one arrived. And uh, in Liverpool, the people wouldn't stop singing, you know, it was like, because we did, we finish it, we give peace a chance. But I think that's really brilliant, you know, after all these years, and it's like 10 years after John's death, there's still people putting their fingers up and saying, give peace a chance, you know, I think that's really important myself. Yeah. What? On the Japanese thing? Well, you know, I mean, since the 60s, I mean, there's a lot of people um, been kind of, you know, interested in marijuana, you know, and uh, I don't really like to talk about it too much because uh, I don't want to preach one way or the other, but basically all that happened was um, I got caught with some in Japan, you know, and I did uh, nine days in the Tokyo Detention Center which was, um, I don't know, interesting experience. Pardon? Uh, no, the, the thing that led to the breakup of Wings was really a, a disastrous concert we had um, for Camper Cheer. It actually wasn't too bad, but we thought it was dreadful. I've listened to the record now, and it's not too bad at all. But at the time, we hated it so much that it just put us off being in a band for a couple of years. I think that led to the breakup. Can we have uh, two more questions and then we've got to go, ladies and gentlemen? It's, um, it's become just a pure money affair kind of thing. But um, I probably will start talking to him about a raise. <laughs> Sorry, Don. Uh, the tour hasn't affected me at all. Um, the tour has been great. Uh, when we started it, we had a new band. Now we've got a band that knows how to play together. So as far as the music's concerned, we've had a ball, and I think the band's playing better than ever. It gets better every night. Me personally, well, you know, it's great if you can have this successful a tour. It makes me look very much forward to all the things that are going to come off the tour, like the album and the film. And most of all, it makes me look forward to the next album. That's what I can't wait to get going. Probably just me. Yeah, and, and there are another a couple of people that I might write with, you know, but the intention at the moment is to just do a lot of writing myself. Thanks very much. We've got to go, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry. I've got to go. See you. Thanks a lot. <laughs>